All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave, and this is this channel is all about um, your DIY motion racing simulator, or motion simulator. Okay, so been talking to a lot of people, and one of the issues that people are coming up with is that they need a more compact simulator. This one here, she's pretty long, and so it's probably maybe doesn't fit everybody's footprint. So what, what I've done is I come up with a brand new design. It's going to be three degrees of freedom. So you're going to have your traction loss. You're going to have uh, the two different motors, but they're not going to be this rear design. We're going to be moving them all up front. And there's a couple of reasons why I want to do that. Okay. One of the reasons is I have a CSL elite wheel. And so it's a, it's a belt drive. It's, it's really fun, very smooth, but I want to upgrade to a DD wheel and I just been thinking, you know, this rig it's pushing from the back and then I got to make a really strong base for it. If I redesigned it and just had a really strong front and pushed from the front instead of the back, I could make the DD wheel, um, the, the, all the structure to mount it really strong. Plus I've ripped off these pedals a couple times uh, just racing, just the way that the base was designed and I'm using part of the old sim rig um, initially to, to mount it. I did have to strengthen it up and now it's no problem, but you know, this whole thing could go for a redesign. So a couple things I wanna incorporate into the new design that uh, I haven't yet is the wind sim. Now I, I wanna upgrade from these smaller fans to these C-Flow fans. They blow like, there's no comparison between these little ones and these things. I did a, a quick video on it running, but uh, I want to incorporate this into the design. Three more things that I want to do. Um, I do like this uh, TH8A shifter. I really do. It's pretty cool. You can put it in H pattern or sequential, but I'd like to actually redesign this, this mount. Um, on the on the top frame and even though the seat is light I never really got the uh, the foam bag kit and I just I didn't do that I did try it I, did, I tried to DIY it with a bag and uh, three cans of spray foam and while it did work it really wore out pretty quick I mean I did like a couple races and the thing was just falling apart so I think what I'm going to do, just going to go with a different seat and not the blue one and, and, and not this, this seat either. I'm just going to get a different seat altogether. I'm still going to use these seat belt, uh, these bungee cords that, uh, kind of when the, when the frame goes forward, it, it pulls, uh, it pulls tight on your chest. I'm still going to be using that, but what I am going to do, I'm still going to be using these butt kickers. But instead of mounting the butt kicker hardware down here, I'm going to make a separate place for all this, all these different uh, things. It may live in this particular area in the front, but I'm not sure. And this may be totally remote. There just might be just uh, three motors. There'll be one right here, and this is be about how how wide and or and how long this uh, this frame will be. It'll be right at the end of the seat, like right here. So this extra two feet, that's not gonna be there. So if, you, if you're up against a wall or something, it's gonna make it much more compact. So this is gonna be the uh, compact design, three degree of freedom. And I'm not gonna build this upper frame, this seat frame. I'm just not gonna do it because we're not gonna be pushing from the back. We're gonna be pushing from the front against the DD mount. Okay, and one, one other thing that's pretty cool. So I'm not gonna be using the truck battery for this next design. I'm pretty well convinced, and I can't use these ones, these converters, but I think if I get some uh, Dell computer power or server power supply um, converters, AC to DC, I think I ought to be able to run these, uh, those three crab pop motors. They're brand new. Let's take a look at them real quick. All right, so these babies, 50 to one. I got three of them. We're gonna be using the 
IBT2 motor controller, and we're getting our power this time instead of off the truck battery. We're going to be using the uh, Dell or uh, HP, whatever, server power supplies. And I haven't done that yet, but a friend of mine has. And uh, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Um, basically, if I can do it, you can do it. Now, I'm just kind of running over this stuff real quick with you guys. We're going to be doing it all in real time in, in the upcoming videos. So basically, with this, this big hole right through the middle, we're going to be using these four inch, um, half inch bolts. And in order to uh, put them in, so you don't have to, I mean, maybe you could pound it in with a hammer or something, but I'm going to be using this uh, half inch tap. I'm just going to put it on drill, use some, uh, some oil and uh, just back it in and back it out. These things will go right through. Okay. So in order to do the lever arms, See, there's a little hole there that they that uh, is supposed to have a uh, whatever a cotter pin or pin in there and that kept snapping off just because of the the amount of torque that these motors can deliver uh, what I ended up doing is just welding all the way around it on the inside and these um, these are five inch lever arms now like I said we're gonna go through all this different stuff and when you're welding things onto these motors I don't know if they're gonna melt. So I just do one little tack and I cool it down, another tack and I cool it down, etc. But I did all those welds like inside the frame after I built it, after those, those pins sheared off. And they just kept shearing off, even if I used hardened um, pins. So the pin was going right in this hole and they just kept shearing off. See, this is, you can see straight through there. So that's why we have to tap it, use that half inch bolt. Now I've had more than a few people ask me about the traction loss. How did I do it and all that? And basically the game will dictate when you're getting, when you're losing traction and go either direction. I think on this next um, design, I'd like to get it so that you could almost do a little bit more than just this, the arm, here is seven inches. I think if I moved everything in, kept the arm the same, I can get a little bit more, you know, maybe maybe a little bit more on either side. Now, not that it weighs all that much, but all of the fan and the Arduino setup, they're gonna be on the other side. So um, right here, I've just got a, a lever on the motor and this, this pan hard or whatever rod, it just kind of, floats back and forth. It just moves a little bit. The lever really moves it more. And if you look at these skateboard wheels, they're the ones that support all the heavy weight. And I know I get bashed by you guys all the time for my cable management uh, expertise. So maybe we'll address that. This is just basically a test rig anyway. Well, I wanna talk about the front pivot. All right, so as you can see, you know, all it is, is one of these you can get at the hardware store it's super strong it's maybe eight bucks i know you can get them for less but i wanted one that didn't have a lot of play but either way this thing barely moves at all all, all you do is it allows the top or the mid frame to rotate just a little bit um, and that's driven by the motor so with that in mind um, i want to get started Went ahead and got two, well actually four of these six foot, six foot sticks, inch and a quarter. Slowly been collecting, you know, just little pieces of metal here and there where I, that can I can use for different things like cutting different things out. Kind of collect a little bit of that kind of stuff. I bought this the other day too. It's a three foot by three inches, three sixteenths flat bar. And this is going to be mounting the U-joint. I'm gonna be harvesting this other end of the U-joint from this rig. It should, I mean, this rig was just a test rig to see if I could um, get enough power to plug something in the wall. And I can do it on this, 
pretty sure from the specs on those Dell or HP uh, power supplies that I can do it with that too. Once again, this is going to be a step-by-step -step video. Um, you can start your journey right here once again. Or, you know, if you've never seen any of this stuff, take a look at my channel. All right, guys, I know I probably didn't do the best job of explaining this, but I wanted to get this uh, video up this weekend. We're going to be building up the uh, base frame and the traction loss frame. I might start, start a little bit on the seat frame. Um, and after we build all the hard parts, we're going to be going into, uh, you know, tapping the motors um, and getting the, uh, the levers working, all that stuff. And then the final section will be, I'm going to go over it again, the uh, electronics involved. Here's my handy dandy sheet from xsimulator.net. And the link is in the description. I've used this sheet like four or five times. There's burn marks and all sorts of stuff on it. But I guarantee it's going to work. It's always worked for me. There's a bunch of guys that have built these. And there are two more right now, maybe three, that are, that are building theirs. They've got the parts in. And these are guys from all over the world. So not just in my neck, neck of the woods. In fact, I don't know anybody around here that does anything like I do. Um, but that's, that's the deal. We're gonna move all the stuff to the front and we're gonna be trying to mount a DD wheel. I'm not sure which one to get, so if you got a comment, suggestion, um, let me know. There goes that uh, alcohol powered uh, drag ATV. We'll see what it looks like. That's some live stuff, guys. He doesn't even have it warmed up yet. But keep in mind that this is going to be a, a series I'm going to do over the next month or so. And uh, it's going to be super cool. Because the second time that you do something, or the third time, you make it better. You learn things. Um, nothing's wrong with the one that I race every weekend. <laughs> in fact, it's phenomenal. But... I'm just going to be redesigning it for weight, and I want to put that DD wheel in. Still going to run two butt kickers, may even run four. So guys, I appreciate it if you join me on this little uh, journey. It's starting right now. Like I said, I've been ordering a few things here and there, and uh, man, I can't wait. This thing, oh yeah, so last thing, it's going to be in VR. Right now, I'm going to design it for the Oculus, which really doesn't matter what kind of thing in VR you design it for. But uh, it's going to have a single screen that's, that's not going to be mounted to the frame. Maybe I'll put that screen on rollers or something. So, you know, a lot of guys have a big TV or something mounted to the wall, and they run in VR. That's what this is all about, running in VR, getting all the weight off of the, off of the front of the machine. Um, all right, guys, take it easy. Uh, Dave out.